it was very frustrating first day um, because we didn't get started in actually sorting garbage until about 11 or 11.30 that morning. There were several little details that needed to be taken care of. So it, it was just, it was a challenge. It was a whole new situation. We were in a tent working outside. It was cold, early spring, and we had an entirely inexperienced crew of waste sorters. The only one on site who had had any experience at it at all was myself as project manager. So it took us a little while to get going, but, but they were troopers. They worked hard. They learned the categories quickly, and everybody was you know, pitching in and helping. Sorting garbage is a dirty, difficult task, but essential for determining what is being thrown away. Waste composition studies are becoming increasingly important as waste management plans and programs grow ever more comprehensive due to increased regulation. Up-to-date, accurate information on the quantity and makeup of the waste stream is essential for effective solid waste management planning. This study was carried out in central Illinois by the Sangamon County Public Health Department and managed by the County Solid Waste Coordinator, Wynn Copley. We wanted to know what was in Sangamon County's garbage, uh, plain and simple. Our 20-year solid waste plan had been adopted using facts and figures from another county that was very similar to ours, but we were unique. We are the seat of the state capitol, lots of government offices. We were looking for a number of different things. We wanted to create a good baseline of data that we could use for years to come about what was in Sangamon County's garbage. We also wanted to take a look and see how our current recycling programs were doing. Also wanted to see approximately how many recyclables or reusables were left in the stream so that we could create targeted waste reduction and recycling efforts in the future. According to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, every American citizen generates an estimated four and one half pounds of solid waste daily. In 1995, the average amount per citizen in Sangamon County was eight pounds. The data derived from a waste composition study or waste sort gives a detailed overview of the waste from a specific geographic area and assists with local, state, or federal waste management compliance efforts. Often such studies are used to provide support for specific programs. We were not attempting to justify the building of a particular type of facility. We were not looking for suitability of our waste for pelletizing or incineration, any of these things. We were simply looking to see what was there. And that defined our waste categories and our methodologies. This waste sort was conducted in four sessions, each a week long during the spring, summer, fall, and winter to compensate for seasonal variations. And the March sort was a challenge because the weather was so cold. It was raw, very windy, snowed a couple of days. The day that it was 17 degrees outside, it was a little difficult to keep, keep moving and keep the crew enthusiastic about sorting through garbage. One advantage for the crew was the location. Many sorts are conducted on an active landfill face, but Sangamon County has no open landfill. The vast majority of waste is funneled through a waste transfer station where local haulers dump their collections. The waste is then loaded into larger trucks for transportation to a landfill in a nearby county. pretty much pulled at random as the trucks came through the gate. Uh, I would identify by interviewing the hauler driving the truck where the truck had come from geographically within the county, what type of waste was on board, i.e. was it generated by a commercial business, was it residential waste, or was it a mix of those types. For statistical accuracy, samples were selected at random from incoming trucks with some discrimination to avoid excessive sampling from a single source or an unusual group of generators. Factors considered included identifying the major contributors to the waste stream, the rural or urban origins of the waste, and the season when the waste was generated. 
Commercial and residential samples were also identified so they could be sorted separately. Observations of the transfer station traffic flow were conducted before the sorting began. I knew coming into the project that we don't have a heavy industrial base in Springfield or the Sangamon County area, so we didn't look for a lot of industrial waste. The vast majority was split between commercial business and residential waste. That was what we focused on. Care was taken to draw samples representative of the entire waste stream. Unusual waste products brought in by the general public and one-time waste loads were not selected for sampling. Once the loads were selected, the drivers were instructed to dump at a location where samples could be pulled from all four sides of the pile to ensure random sampling. The vast majority of solid waste that we pulled out was bagged garbage. It was already in sacks. There was some loose waste. More loose waste came from boxes, commercial boxes or dumpsters that people could dump into. But by far, the residential waste was mostly bagged. Studies conducted by various groups, including the Environmental Protection Agency, have concluded that representative sort samples should weigh between 200 and 300 pounds. I got very good at eyeing samples. I could tell by looking at the, the front end loader scoop by approximately how full it was, by how dense the waste was that we had put into the front end loader, whether or not we had a sufficient two to 300 pound sample. The odor from the garbage was not nearly as bad during the March sort and during the December sort. Boy, the August sort was particularly ripe, I can tell you, and, and the maggots were thriving in the garbage. Bees and flies and maggots were our buddies that sort. We just had to get used to dealing with them. Um, the heat presented the greatest challenge. During the August sort, we were very careful to take, to take breaks, to cool down, to have plenty of water so that no one got dehydrated. While the hot August weather in central Illinois was an annoyance, finding workers willing to endure the task proved difficult. One thing that I consistently heard in researching other studies and how they had been carried out was how difficult it was to find and then keep good, willing waste sorters. It's not work that everyone is cut out for and definitely can turn your stomach at times. Um, we turned to the local Department of Community Resources and they administer the Job Training Partnership Act, JTPA program. We offered this as job training. After a survey was done in Sangamon County ascertaining that there were a number of uh, employee turnovers in a given year at the local hauling companies and at the recycling facilities, then this was considered to be good job training for that type of job. We offered higher the minimum wage, we offered incentives in that they would get a raise for each subsequent sort that they returned for each season, um, you know, and, and perhaps even incentive raises for good workers, and all of those things sounded appealing at first. We started out with a full sorting crew of, I think, six people, but it was very difficult to get them to return anyway. And then, after the second sort, the JTPA program ran out of money halfway through the year. So we turned to the Illinois Department of Corrections, who has a work camp program by which they will loan out laborers from their inmate crews to come and help with community projects. and. After a great deal of consideration, they kindly agreed to provide workers for us. Keeping the workers safe was an important part of the project. All workers were provided safety gear and instruction. And we went over not only the waste categories, we went over how to properly sort through the waste. You never plunge your hands into a pile of garbage where you cannot see. You consistently pull from the top of the pile and sort as you go. They were also given instruction as to how to safely lift heavy loads. We dealt with a lot of heavy loads, and I'm very pleased to be able to say we got through all four weeks of sorting without a single injury. Okay, guys, we found some sharks. Everybody be careful. And when we found needles, we were careful to announce it to everyone that we had found a bag of needles. 
or, or a certain amount of needles in the sample. And once that was announced and everyone was aware, then the person who had found them walked them carefully to the bin and deposited them. Personal protective equipment was very important as well. We used Tyvek suits that had elastic seals at the wrists and ankles. We used eye goggles, uh, nuisance masks for breathing, polyurethane puncture-resistant gloves, uh, puncture-resistant leather boots were issued to every sorter. Um, you know, these are basic items but necessary for personal, personal safety. The October sort was probably optimal sorting weather. It wasn't too hot, it wasn't too cold. We were challenged somewhat by rain. We had some, some soaking heavy loads of garbage come through the gate, um, but we allowed for that in recording our data. And all in all, we probably had the smoothest time sorting during October. Many more trucks came through the transfer station early in the morning, so we had a more steady supply of loads coming through the gate. And we just, I continuously ran between the trucks that we had selected to pull a load from, uh, pulled a sample out of that load, ran back to the tent, and we, we would sort through about seven or eight samples of a morning um, with one late morning break, and we would eat a late lunch. And it, we slowed down. After having lunch, we were just moved a little slower. You know, the afternoons were usually warmer. And so to, to leave ourselves an easier afternoon, we sorted the majority of samples in the morning hours and took a late lunch. The samples were weighed and transported from the transfer station to the sorting tent by a wheel loader provided by Waste Management of Illinois Incorporated, operators of the transfer station. Equipment that we used was typical to other studies that have also been done. In our case, we were not sorting inside of a building or a facility, so we needed to rent a tent with sides and lights, I might add. Uh, we needed sturdy supports to hold the shelving that we, that we put the bins on to sort into. We needed bins to sort into. Um, Waste Management of Illinois kindly provided us with recycling bins, curbside recycling bins, that we used as category bins to sort into. Um, we used a digital scale, a very important piece of equipment that was on loan to us from our consulting firm. Um, nothing real technical required, probably the most technical piece of equipment was the digital scale. Experience previously with the Macon County Waste Characterization Study had shown they figured that they could sort through about 10 samples a day. That proved to be true on our project as well. Um, some days were slower than others. The day that it was 102 degrees in the shade, we only sorted through seven samples of garbage and considered ourselves lucky to get through that many. Other days we cranked. Uh, 12 or 14 samples were sorted through in a single day. A lot depended upon the weather conditions, um, just how energetic we were, what kind of music was playing on the radio that day, you know, those sorts of things. Selection of the waste categories was driven by the purpose of the study. Paper, plastics, organics, metals, glass, special or unique items, and construction materials were chosen as major categories, and 27 subcategories were developed. Each sample was identified by number, and each category was weighed after sorting. Samples were then returned to the transfer station. After a while, we got to be garbologists. We were really garbage experts, and we, we learned not to break open all the bags at once. If you're working in a specific area, you break open one bag at a time. Often, a, a bag of garbage, a sack of garbage, will contain essentially one type of garbage um, from the bathroom, many, many paper towels, things like that. So it's safer, or it's easier and safer sometimes just to kind of keep all of that material that's the same in that one sack. Um, sometimes you'd end up with a really messy sack that had a lot of ash in the bottom of it or a lot of coffee grounds and things like that. So it's easier to sort the larger materials from the top of the pile into their categories and then deal with the fines or the miscellaneous items at the bottom separately. Such detail was important. The waste had to clearly fit in a single category for accuracy. Clearly defined categories were essential. At the end of the sort week, the next week I would come into work with the handwritten data sheets that had been recorded as each sample was, was weighed and, and sorted through. And these were the data was input into a spreadsheet program. 
uh, we identified the sample number and then entered into each spreadsheet cell the weight and approximate volume of each category of waste for that sample. The data was uh, copied onto a disk and transported, then given to the consulting firm who helped analyze it. A consulting firm, Patrick Engineering Incorporated, had been chosen at the beginning of the project and was necessary to ensure proper data analysis and statistical accuracy. The final sort took place in December. It was early winter, so it wasn't quite so bad as it sometimes get in, gets in central Illinois in January or February. Um, in fact, I believe it was colder in March than it was in December. The snow was still a challenge. The icy mud puddles were still a challenge. If it rained, the floors inside the tent were automatically slick, so we laid down cardboard sheets or paneling, whatever we could find, to help with that problem. Actually, what we found was that there was no great fluctuation in the waste from season to season. Uh, typically, you will find more packaging, uh, wrapping types of waste in December prior to Christmas. Probably would, be, would have been a lot more just after Christmas. Seasonal things for celebrations, like a lot of pumpkins during the October sort. Um, lots of celebration waste. I don't know what else to call it. Paper cups. Uh, packaging for food to go food from carnivals and festivals that might have been in the area during August. Um, not an inordinate amount of landscape waste during any one season. Uh, landscape waste is banned from Illinois landfills and for the most part we didn't find any. There was one or two sacks that, that got through but for the most part that ban is working well. We found very little landscape waste. What I saw that was a little disconcerting that definitely could be used in a more common sense manner were perfectly usable items from construction demolition waste um, and things from home, from homes, just regular household items, furnishings that were perfectly usable, clothing that if not used as clothing should at least have been recycled as textiles, items like that, and certainly also recyclables aluminum cans and glass and steel and tin cans and paper that all could have been recycled. What we found was that overall we're pretty typical of other cities and counties of similar size. We could do more uh, in, a, in the way of recycling and reducing waste. But we're not doing too badly. It was obvious when we had a load or a sample that was from um, a village or municipality that had a strong recycling program, there were fewer recyclables in that sample. So we feel like we're doing a pretty good job, but we can always do a little better. There's always room for improvement. I'm confident that the data that we've arrived at actually reflects what's in Sangamon County's waste stream. The data will be useful for years to come as a profile of Sangamon County's garbage. We certainly know a whole lot more about um, who we are as a garbage making people, if you will, and we have a better handle on where to go from here.